Hi, it's Kit. I'm back. And we are going to go ahead today and do that, my little black book. I wanted to show you, I did finish, the last video was on the organizer. So while I um, loaded the video on the camera, I went ahead and finished the organizer. And I'm liking the, the double-sided paper better than I did the cardstock one that I matted. Because, look at this. It's like half the size. <laughs> so I've got plenty of room to stuff it and it won't be so big. So this was the original prototype I made with the cardstock and then matting the paper on top of it. And this is the one that I showed you how to make. That is just the double sided paper from Basic Gray. And I'm really liking this. I've already got my list moved over. I've got my tabs on. I've got uh, all the stamping done with those wild and crazy numbers that I'm really having fun with. And um, all I need now is to find a band because this band doesn't match. So I'm going to go find a, probably just a black. You know what? That would look cool, wouldn't it? I'll just put a black elastic band around it. And um, unless maybe I can find a burnt orange one, a reddish orange. So I wanted to show you that, and I also started another one of those um, six by six mini albums. I thought, well, I'm going to try one for Christmas, and um, so this one isn't put together, so it's easier maybe for you to see how I'm putting it together. Yeah, <laughs> trying to keep you know me. I use every little scrap I can find, but uh, let me show you because I think I called. The connector hinges and there aren't any hinges in this it's just your two six by six sheets and I score in an inch now on this one I'm putting a little bit of a spine because I'm not sure I want to punch that guiding half circle to keep the ribbon in so I put a little quarter inch spine but it's just the six by six from the paper line and score it one inch and use it as the hinge. So that's why the pages are all different sizes in it. So it's a little easier to see it with this one. And I'm liking this Christmas one. And I'm doing some different things already. I cut one of the pages down to have it go in as just a little half page. So this is something very simple and uses up those 6x6 pads if you're like me and you've got a bunch of them left uh, with bits and pieces in it. Because you can make as many or as few pages as you want in these, depending on how much paper you've got left. So, And this one is just doing an additional fold over flap. So there you go. That gives you a little bit better idea maybe of how those are made. So just take your 6x6 six six, and on this one and on the other one, I'm using the top of the pad too. On the pastel one, the flower butterfly fly slash frog one, <laughs> um, that's, I used the white edge to punch the design. So on this paper pad which is Seasons, um, it had holes in the top. So I'm using the top, leaving the holes in, and I'm going to tie fibers in those holes. So I hope that gives you maybe a better understanding of what I was talking about than I really told you in the last video that I did. So there you go. Now, why I am back is to do the little black book that I told you about. Now, I'm going to do it in ivory, though. I, I usually always do it in black because the colors pop so much better against the black. It's the little black dress mini album that I've made for years and years. So, But I'm going to do it in ivory because I thought maybe you could see the uh, scoring better on the ivory cardstock. So, actually, it's vanilla. It's very vanilla from Stampin' Up. So the first thing we're going to do is cut our 12 by 12 and a half. 
So we've got two 6 by 12s. So really all it is is cutting, scoring, folding, and then the book is done. Well, we have to do it one attachment, but then um, you can just mount photos in it, or you can do what I do and use mats, use photo mats in it. So first thing we're going to do, put one of your 6x12s in your scoreboard, and we are going to score at 3.5, 3.5, Seven and a quarter. Oops. Keep your fingers out of the way. Seven and a half. And eleven. Oops. Okay, then we're going to put the other six by twelve. And again, your twelve inch side is going to be at the top of your scoreboard for these scorings. And we're going to score at three and a half. Seven. Seven and an eighth, ten point six two five, ten and five eighths, and ten point eight seven five, ten and uh, seven eighths. That's the tick right before your eleven. Okay. Now what we're going to do is on this piece. Well, they both look alike, don't they? Let me get the scoreboard out of the way because we're just going to burnish our folds now. On this piece, we're going, this is the first one we scored, I'm sorry. And this is the one inch. This is where we did the 11 inch score. I'm turning it over and I'm folding that. Well, no, let's leave that face up and fold it back. I'd rather these other score lines fold in the opposite direction. So fold that one inch piece back. Then go ahead and fold on these other score lines. And this is so easy. This is another one you can make a ton of these. And they're so versatile because they're not any specific geared towards any specific holiday or anything. Okay, we got both our spines folded. I finger fold first. Now I'm going to come back, line up my tops and my bottoms so that they are even. The edges are even. And reinforce that score. Because what we're going to do, we're going to create a roll on this. So the most important thing is just remembering the right direction to go. So this is going to be the front. And now take your other piece, the second one that you scored, and you're going to have a small score area that you did at the end where you did the six and five eighths and the sixth and seven eighths score line, the ten point I mean the ten ten point six two five and the ten point eight seven five. Ten and five eighths and ten and seven eighths. And let's get that spine set. Then come on down, and we've got one more little spine area. That eighth of an inch spine area. Let's set that with our fingers. And then the last fold. Just, just a straight out fold. Now let's get all those set. Lining your edges up. And it seems like all of a sudden it got dark in here. I don't know why. It's sunshiny outside. I'm still not used to all the light movement. 
I'm sitting in a bay window area, so you would think that that would pick up a lot of light, but we are on a heavily treed street, so it can make a difference. Or set. Okay. Now we are going to take this is the section that has the fold back on it. We're going to lay it the folded edge down. And we are going to tape or glue this three and a half inch by six inch section right onto this flap which measures one and one eighth inch that was at the end of the section that we folded last. Okay? See how there's a flap here and a spine area. We are going to take this page and we're going to glue it right in on that flap so it butts up to that spine area. Do not glue it in the spine area. Okay? So get, I'm just going to use ATG tape and I'm going to tape on the flap or you can glue this is really the only taping and gluing for the main part of this book so the important part of the little black dress is basically getting the measurements right and then attaching this flap in the proper spot making sure all your edges line up now with your flap facing down you're going to start at the other end and you're just going to fold and this will just roll up naturally there we go. That is the secret to the little black dress. <laughs> Which in this case is really not a dress. It's a mini album. But now all you have to do is decide how to decorate it. Um, again, I have decorated this with just stamps. Where I've kind of created my own design on it using stamps. I have decorated it like the one I showed you in the last video where I just put the, the matting uses the same size of matting pretty much on all these pages and this will disappear I've got some tape overrun, look how dirty my fingers are just rub, if you have tape overrun on here just um, rub your finger up and down it There we go. So it uses all the same size of mats, which I cut my mats. I think it's three and a quarter. Let me see. Yeah, I cut the mats three and a quarter by 5.75. Three and a quarter, 3.25 times five and three quarters, 5.75. And that just fills in all these little spaces. And the only other size I use is on this flap here. And that one I cut 5.75 long, 5 and 3 quarters. And then I cut it 3 quarters wide, 0.75 inches wide. And then to create the closure, what I do is the ribbon's going to come up across here. Um, I've got that other one ready to mail, so I don't have it to show you, and I do have another one. Where is it? It was here. Hmm. 
Don't know where it went. Hello? Where art thou? And I've seen it since we moved, so I know I haven't lost it. <laughs> and it needs to be in this vicinity somewhere, but I don't see it. Okay. Don't know what happened to it. That's strange. But anyway, when I find it, I'll show it to you again. But what I do is before I mat this back section here. See, this is your front page. If you're going to put a mat on the back, which what I usually do is treat what I call the back all the same way. Same paper, because the focus point is really on the inside of this album. When it's set up on display or just as it unfolds, the focus is on the inside. So before I put this mat on the back, I glue or tape down some ribbon here that then comes across the front and ties here. And it makes a really neat, clean profile. That's the thing about this album. It's very clean, very neat looking. It's not one that you want to put a lot of puffy frou-frou on. You can layer, but the way that it rolls, if you start putting too much thick and fluffy things on the inside, it's going to bow up your book. So, there you go. That is the secret of the little black dress slash mini album. And as soon as I find that other one, I will show it to you again. But if you go to the previous video that I just am uploading, it'll have one that I just made that I just packed up to mail. <laughs> To my sister in it all because she is a first time grandmother so I always send her something I make where she can put Jack's pictures in it that's her first grandchild is little Jack so I hope you're doing well I hope you enjoyed that one and that is probably the quickest fastest one we have ever done so thanks for joining me and I hope you picked up some good ideas and Got to get those gifts going for Christmas, so I'd love to see what all you're doing, and, you know, let me know what you're up to. Maybe you'll give me some ideas on some things to make, because we have a huge family, and I've got a lot of projects on the board, but I'm always looking for something new. Take care, thank you much, and talk to you soon. Bye now.